Hello, I'm back again and finally we are looking into outputting values to LEDs and displays after we converted our JavaScript code to Java in the last part and I extended that by now a little bit with two examples. We will add a text display and we will add a simple LED. If you take a look at the Bitwig Control Surface API documentation and you look at the hardware output element, you see there. There are exactly four different types of outputs you can have. You can have this on-off hardware light, which is a simple LED with an on-off state. And you have a more complex LED, which can have as many states as you want. So for example, an RGB LED. And you have two display types, one for graphical display and one for a text display. In this example, I will look into the text display and into the on-off hardware light, but the others are straight forward if you know how to do that but I will give you some hints and tips on that later as well so let's look into the code uh, one word of warning first so this is all a very very long and ugly method where I put all the stuff in this is just for demonstration purpose if you do a real extension and a real device support please do classes do methods all the usual stuff you do encapsulate your stuff and don't do it like this this is just an example to get you started okay so that's the code also from last time i added now here 1.1 these are our input controls we created and what is new now is 1.2 we also want to have these two output controls again with the hardware surface we create our on off hardware light regarding the hardware surface i made this now here a class variable because we need that object later on as well so you create here the display button light. So we want to add this LED to the play button. And that's what we do straight away in the next method call. We assign the play button light to our button. And then we create the text display. And this number here just gives you the information how many lines you want to have. So we create a very simple text display with only one line. And that's the same thing. And you don't need to position that because that's now part of your button but you need to position here the text display and that's what I also did here in the end so the text display is added as well. So how does the update now work? To update the output controls in Flush, you need to call the method update hardware on your hardware surface. That's the reason also why I made this class variable and we check if it's already instantiated and if it's the case, we call this method. That's all you need to do. And this jumps then in all the update hardware methods of your controls to update them. And we will look into that now. So here in the beginning, we created our two objects we want to output and here now in what I said here for we create all those callbacks here we do now all the binding stuff for our output element so what we need to create first is our media output port this is where we will send the data for lighting the LEDs filling the display and stuff like that and let's go again with this transport playing state example and that's what we bind to this light so the light needs to know when it should shine when it should be on and for that there is this method set value supplier so here you can add a callback method where you give it the information and this is pretty simple we simply say transport x playing get so the boolean state of the playing state is the information to light that button and that's why i call this mark interested method in a previous line so we have access to that value Okay, so the light now knows his state, but what we still do not know is how to draw it and how to send it. So let's first, yeah, let's go here. So we have here this on up update hardware and there's a little pitfall there's also an on update hardware directly at the light but you need to use that one on the is on method and this property to which gets called when the state changes regarding here on that variable and this is the code you need to implement yourself so this is the value you send then to your output port to your device so you check here the is on off state variable and here you need then to send normally this is a, a MIDI node or a, a CC value and you need to check the documentation of your controller what you need to send to that button or LED to make it light but that's the way to your device we also have the simulator and um, 
This might be different because your controller might be have a very weird number for colors or you may, maybe you send a one to your device and it shines red, which has no relation at all. So uh, you need to tell the simulator that you want to see red. And this can be done here if you create such a hardware light visual state. Very complex word, but actually pretty simple. You just give it one or two colors. If you give one, you only draw the background color. If you give it two, you can also change the label color. And that's what I did here. So if our property is on, so we are in playback state, we do the background color in green, shine the button in green and do the text then in black because it's better readable. And if it's off, it's simply black the button and we draw the text then in white. So that's it for the play button. For the display, we need also to update it on the hardware and also update the content of the display. So this display has several lines. We only created one, so we access the first line, the zero-based index. And this has also a property, which is a text. And for this text, you can also set such a value supplier. And we check only here if it's the displaying state is set. And if it's playing, we change here the display content to playback. Oh, there's a typo. Playback is playing on and otherwise it's off. So let's move on here. We also need to send that information to your device. So here you can also get here this line zero and get the current value. So it's also caching is implemented here. You can set it as many times as you want, but only if it changes, you will get an update then. And here you can also send that to your output port. Normally displays are addressed with a sysx code. So you also need to check the documentation on your controller on that. And that's basically it's what we need to do. Let's check out the code. Let's also recompile it to fix our stuff here. So let's switch to Bitwig and let's open up here the simulator hardware GUI. And let's also have here the the script console open, here it is. And you already see here, there is the display is filled here with the text, playback is off. The play button is drawn in black because playback is really off. And you also see here in the lock screen here, the information would have needed to be sent to your device. And also here the display would have needed to send to the device. So back to that one. And if I now press the playback button, you see it's now drawn in green playback also in the display. The display is updated to on and then you also get the updates here in the method calls that you would need to send that information to your controller. Also, if I change the playback state on the controller, you see the playback button is turned off and also here the methods are called. So I think this should get you going. And as a promise, let's have another look at the other one. So the multi-state hardware is a little bit more complicated, but also not that problematic. Uh, just the names are a little bit different. So instead of this is on method, where is this on method? Instead of that, you need to use a state method and also put a command in here. If you use multi-state hardware light, use a state instead of the is on. The callback here is a little bit more complicated. You need this internal hardware light state and also this set color state function is also a little bit different but also uh, yeah straightforward to understand by the way there is a little typo i found it's here it's Function, but that's how it's called. So it's a typo in the API and not a typo here in my code. So don't try to fix that. And if we look at the last one, the hardware pixel display, it works also similar. The difference is here that you need to draw a bitmap and how to draw a bitmap. I showed you in the part number 12 of this tutorial, which is multi-threading and graphics. And there I explain how you can draw into such a bitmap and for that you definitely need to use Java to draw a bitmap.
So what you need to do is uh, fill your bitmap and this bitmap has this callback function here, the render function that you can render the content of your graphic display. And the rest is the basically the same. If you get this on update hardware callback, then you send it out to your device. So I think this closes this four part series about the hardware API. If you have any questions, just write it down in the comments or in KVA forums or on Facebook or wherever you prefer and give me some ideas what you like to see in, in more parts so I can dive into other things. Yeah, and until then, write some funky code.